Hello, this is Mike with Trade Winds RV Center. Here to congratulate you on your Coachman Apex 249 RBS Travel Trailer. I'm going to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things to get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A couple things to take into consideration when you're parking. On your campsite, I want you to leave plenty of room for this awning. On your off campsite, besides leaving room for your slide, I also want you to think about where your power and water connections are going to be. There's going to be all the way at the rear of the unit. Water and power are both right here. Behind your tires on your off camp side. So park accordingly so you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. Once you arrive and unhook your hitch, first thing you do is level your unit. And it comes with a power tongue jack. Night docking light should you arrive at night. Extend to raise, retract to lower. Now should you lose power, under this rubber stopper right here is a bolt that your hand crank will go on for your stabilizing jacks to get that up and down should you lose power. Speaking of power, check your battery post every now and then, make sure nothing's wiggled loose. Again, once we get our unit level, the next thing we'll do is stabilize it. All four corners of the unit have these scissor stabilizing jacks and a three quarter inch hand crank. I'm gonna recommend stabilizing jack pads. Jack pads are gonna protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt and debris, keep them from sinking into hot black top. Use your 10% off coupon, grab a four pack of them, put them down, and run these down just until they're taut. Remember, our unit's already level, all we're trying to do is stabilize it at this point. Run that down, once it feels like it's gonna start lifting the unit or you got some resistance, go ahead and stop. Get all four of them down. Put in your tire chuck, chocks if you want. That's your unit level and stable. You can hook up your power and water. 30 amp cord, plugs in here on the side. Got the shop one on there right now, but you plug in here. Uh, your convenience pack will have a 30 to 15 amp reducer. Should you need to plug into a 110. Get your power hooked up. Hook up your water. At campsites, you're going to hook up two city water connection. First and foremost, a water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is going to reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 psi. Protecting the lines in the unit. Always use these because you don't know what the water pressure is at different campsites. Hook that up. Hook up your hose. Don't turn your hose on yet. Let's find your hot water heater. Yours is over on the campsite. And all we're doing at this point, folks, making sure our drain plug is back in there. Brand new anion rod down there. Get that in there nice and snug and tight, and then you can go ahead and turn on your hose. Now, if that hose has been on for a few minutes, go inside, open the slide if you need to, but I need you to open up all of your water lines sinks your showers get all the air out of the lines shut them off and you're all set to camp now let's say we're going to go camping and we're not going to use city water we're going to go dry camping in that case you're going to fill up your fresh water tank which is over here by your hot water heater no need for a water pressure regulator here gravity fill this with a hose two ways to tell it's full one there's an overflow valve right here or two on the inside where you check the levels of your black and gray tanks there's also a fresh water button Keep an eye on that while you're filling it up. Once it's full, remove that hose, and then whenever you want to utilize that water, you'll turn on your water pump indoors. Don't turn on your water pump and hook to that city water. That is already pressurized. All right, we're all set to camp. We got power and water. We'll go ahead and walk you around the rest of the unit, starting over here on the off camp side again. So we got our stabilizing jacks, big pass through storage with they can use a slam lock. They work best when they slam down. Big uh, slide, I just want to mention on your slide control, or your slide seals, they got a spray you can apply to those to keep them nice and flexible and pliable over the years. There's a vent for your hood range, you got an outdoor shower. Black tank flush, we'll talk about that when we dump our black and gray tanks. Again, our city water connection, here's where you plug in your cable at. Black and gray tanks again. Grab a ladder, go up on top of your roof, and check it out several times a year. Uh, it's baking in the sun all year, so check all your seams and caulk as needed with re recommended RV roofing caulk. That's a big maintenance on these, keeping your roof nice and dry. Coming down our cap side, this is access to the back of your fridge. Again, your hot water heater. Uh, here's your fresh water. Fresh water drain and low point drains are both underneath here. There's our low point drain and a freshwater drain 
is that single white one right back there. Uh, these are nice bug covers for these that already installed. A few things on this. This is your furnace flue. Steer clear of it when you're running it. It does get hot and uh, also make sure it's never blocked. If you do want to run a TV out here, you got a cable 110 hookup. That'll hold your door open for you. The other side is your pass-through storage with lighting. Here's you can plug in a solar panel that'll trickle charge your batteries. Your propane does have a cover. Regulator here in the middle, just point it toward the tank you wish to be using. Lefty Lucy to open. Green means you've got gas, if you can see that. That about covers everything out here. Let's go take a look at the inside. Coming up beside the unit, first thing I always like to point out is the fire extinguisher. Make sure you and everyone that's camping with you knows the fire extinguisher is located by the entry doorway in case of an emergency. As you come in, looking up to your left here, the control, control panel, I've already turned on some lights here. So starting up top is our slide control. I'm going to go ahead and run that out. I'm going to look to make sure no doors or anything are going to be hit as that goes out. I'm going to just make sure that bathroom door is closed. That's what I call a short slide. It goes in rather quickly and out quickly. All right, so it's out. Here's your awning. Just want to mention on your awning. You only want to run that out until you can see your flap fall down. This is a fast awning too. So that white flap falls down and you can see your bar. If I hold that extend down, that will continue running out, flip up onto itself and start running itself up backwards. So keep an eye on it when you run it out, make sure you don't run it out further than you need to. Down below are all lighting. Awning light. Entertainment light, step light. Bring that the rest of the way back in. Shut off my awning light and close our door. All right, walking into the unit. Let's start right here. Kitchen, this or dinette. This dinette tabletop will lift up. Remove them bars. Put your tabletop on these wooden lips here. Put your flat cushions on top. There's a nice spot for a couple of kids to sleep. Down here's your carbon monoxide propane detector. Next to that is your breaker box and fuses. You got a ton of 15s in there, a couple of 40s. Highly recommend having some of those with you when you go camping. Come right over here to your Dometic thermostat. Go ahead and crank the air up in here. Cool. Run that down. I should kick this AC on. Here's a quick dump on that. Open that up and then blast cold air down. Close it and blast through these. And these are open and closed so you can put it where you want. And you can spin these. Now you'll notice I'll shut your AC off. Let's just cycle back to off. Shut off rather quickly. goes that took maybe 30 seconds I'm gonna crank your furnace up see what your term for that is we'll hear it put it down in there All right now if I shut your furnace off you will notice it's actually gonna take a couple of minutes before that furnace fan cycles through and shuts off Dometic fridge controls are up top here didn't need to open that to use it. Turn it on here. Auto means when you plug it in, you're running off electricity. As soon as you unplug, you're running off gas. Pick that up, you're automatically on gas. If that light comes on, check your gas. Okay, back to our bathroom. This is where you're going to check the levels of your battery. 
fresh and black dray tanks. Uh, I will tell you that battery will read um, all red when you're plugged in. So if you want to see your actual battery level, unplug and then check and hit that battery. Here's where you turn on your water pump to get to that fresh water. 110 with GFCI reset. Toilet area, hand crank open, exhaust, separate, separate entryway, make sure you keep that locked. This door you want to have snapped open for traveling. You don't want that bouncing down the road like this, so make sure you have them snapped open. Shower, same way, you want to snap closed. Coming into our kitchen area, just want to mention plumbing. Here's your access to everything. It's almost all pecs in here. Um, if you travel a lot in this, you're bouncing this up and down the road. Keep an eye on things. Make sure nothing wiggles loose over time. Got a self-explanatory. Yeah, this is so strange. I can't start. Oh, there it is. Start. Microwave. You got a light and fan. Above our cooktop, turn that to light, hit the spark. So a quick note, when you first arrive, you are going to have to turn this on high and just keep hitting your sparks. I'm one until they start lighting up because you need to bleed the lines and get the uh, propane into them Same thing on your oven Turn it to pilot here spark it there You'll see the reflection or see your pilot light on before you turn that to your desired temperature Looks like a jackknife sofa here jackknife that down to a quick bed Jackknife it back up Television sound system. Oh. Charging port. Here's where your cable goes in. You want to make sure that green light is on. That is your antenna. I'll find your remote here. I know the Jensen stereos are pretty nice. All I recommend is that you go into your um, menu, Medicare go to your digital channel scan, scan for all your local channels so that you'll be able to pick up all the ones at the campsite of where you're at. Remotes for sound system as well. Turn it on over here so you can see what's going on. Looks like it's and I this indoor and outdoor, three zones, um, auxiliary, Bluetooth, DVD, nice system. Biggest thing I want to show you here is how to spin this. Ready to go to bed at night. Go ahead, close your bedroom doors. Lift up on this little piece right here. That's gonna release this. You're gonna spin it into your bedroom. And now you can watch TV in there. Try to sell your bed open. Spin it and then you can lock it in this side as well. If you wanna mention your bedroom, you get charging ports up here, individual light, hand crank, that no exhaust to it and then storage underneath your bed Let that spin back around open that door back up make sure you secure this down for traveling and make sure that's not bouncing all over the place snap our doors closed for travel as well looking for a smoke alarm there it is and that should about cover everything in here Act like we're leaving the campsite and close the unit up. I like to start 
by seeing doors and drawers. Walk through the unit, make sure all doors and drawers are closed. Um, up here, we're going to make sure that, that bedroom door is closed. Turn to my control panel and shut off all of my lights. Now I see any other lighting that's on is individual lighting that I need to walk through and shut off myself. And last week two in the bedroom. All right, now I'll come back over to my control panel and turn on entry lights and say doors and drawers. Walk through the unit, make sure all doors and drawers are closed. Nothing's going to impede your slide from coming in. Come on up here and hit slide in. Really, the only thing you have to worry about here is make sure that that bathroom door is closed. Slides in, shut off my lights, and exit the unit. Now, before you leave the dump station, you're going to lock, deadbolt, lift and turn this handle. That's how you want that to travel. Steps will fold twice or once and then in all right if we are dry camping we're going to bring up our stabilizing jacks come over here to fresh water drain get up in there and open up that white one and dump all that fresh water and head on home or the nearest dump station whenever we're in need of for the campsite we we'll want to hook our power our water our cable bring up our stabilizing jacks and head on up to the dump station that's the dump station park accordingly. Remember, your dump is all the way at the rear on your driver's side of your tow vehicle. That 10-foot hose comes to your convenience tank. You're going to hook that up and pull our black handle over there. That's your sewer. Go inside, check the level of your black tank. Once it shows empty or close to it, come back out here. Leave that black handle open. Grab the hose at the dump station and hook up to this black tank flush. Again, emphasizing leaving that black handle open, turn that hose on, let that run for a good five minutes. It's gonna wash all that nastiness out of your black tank. When that's done, close that back up. Come out here, make sure all that washout water you put in there is drained, close your black, and pull your gray. Now usually while my grays are draining, come on over here and open up those low point drains. If we're done camping for a while, we don't want to leave hot water in our hot water heater. Come over here. Lift up on this pressure release valve. Now be careful. Some hot water could come out of there. When that's done, then you can pull your drain plug for your residual hot water. All these jobs are much easier with two hands. All right. When that gray is done. Close that gray, take that sewage hose, and conveniently and sanitarily store it right here in your bumper and head on home. Again, we thank you guys so much for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this Apex for many years to come. Happy camping!